Hey, welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. <laughs> We've got a lot of good things to go over with you today. And for those of you who are just listening to us for the first time this year, Happy New Year. We're still in the beginning stages of 2016. Oh my gosh. Sounds weird. I know. Saying it. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, anyway, uh, we've got uh, some MLG news to talk about with you, some good gamer feats, some more Star Wars and Oculus news, so we have a lot to go over with you. My name is Will, with us as always, Mr. Nine. Yo. And Mr. James. How's it going? Okay, guys, let's uh, talk about some interesting news. Um, I'll start off with this, this one. Uh, Ga Gary's Mod <laughs> has sold... 10 million copies or units Woo! or whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm not too familiar with it. What, what is it? Dude. It's one of the most chaotic mods you've ever seen on PC. Oh, it's PC? They're, yeah, it's They're, PC only. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on, in Valve, um, it's in Steam. Uh, it, it started as a joke, really, mm -hmm. and kind of just blew up from there. I totally Smooth. just spilled that. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a very accessible mod. You can do pretty much anything and everything you could ever want to do within it. Um, it's very to, to what? To anything? To or anybody. Yeah, like, you can make you... like you can make mini games out of it. You can make like open world free It's essentially room. Little Big Planet meets Minecraft meets Disney Infinity meets everything. So, so once you get it, one. they give you the tools to it's like 10 kind bucks, of. isn't it? It's, yeah, it's like it's, 10 or 15 bucks. Yeah. It's not really expensive. Yeah. And you can use assets from other games that you already have installed on your system. And essentially you can get just... But if I have no clue enjoyment. on modding... You just mess around with it and you'll pulling. have a blast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that sounds yeah. like fun. Yeah, so oh, it's yeah. an accomplishment for the, the gaming community at large and the modding community especially. And that's reached 10 million. It really blew up when they added the, the source um, recorder. Yeah, the video recorder built into the Source engine, because now people just make music videos with game characters, and some of them are just hilarious. Yeah, I, I now, now see. As long as it doesn't mess around with my game experience, I no, don't it mind. Won't. It's separate. I, I know. It's I'm entirely saying, separate from. I everything encourage else. this. I don't mind it. Like you mentioned, people are going to create funny videos. I mean, as long as you're not stepping on the whole copyright thing, blah, blah, blah. But the only thing it's going to do is encourage more people to get in development, yeah. I, I think. Yeah. I mean, Which so is always going to be for, good for good the for gamers. gamers. Yeah. yeah. Um, so right on. All right, yeah. there you go. Um, Happy 10 million, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Um, Activision, get this. Activision has reportedly bought MLG for $46 million. Major League Ooh. Gaming has been... <laughs> Sold to Activision for forty-six million. Q, Q the Imperial March dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy news. I think. I, I, I mean, esports, Major League Gaming is a massive player. But you know, it's a growing thing. It's e esports is definitely a growing market. Yeah, MLG is what a lot of people credit to starting that mm -hmm. market. Sure. Um, it, I think the only reason Activision specifically went after them is because ESL won the bid for Call of Duty World, Tur World League this year. Mm. Right. And they're like, well, if we can just acquire our own thing, we don't have to give it to anybody, and we just keep all the profits. Yeah. ESL is? ESL is blowing up. Yeah, right but now. what is ESL? Uh, Esports League, I believe. So, so that's for those of you who don't know. Um, and right now we're talking about uh, um, Major League Gaming being sold to Activision. Once again, you're watching Press Start TV. My name's Will, James Nine. Yo. Um, I mean, James, what's your take on this? Uh, it's yet to be seen. It, it's when you have a bigger, bigger corp coming in and taking over something, it, it always feels like it, it might get uh, exploited. A like bit. the whole Twitch thing? Yeah, yeah. So um, Twitch went about it the right way, though. Yeah. And with Activision, we, we don't really know. The what whole Disney do. thing and yeah. Star Wars? Disney, yeah. Star Wars, Time Warner, and AOL, and. Bush and Miller and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, We're just throwing names out there. <laughs> um, you know, so so uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, obviously, it remains to be seen, but. I think what you're getting at is you don't want to see a corporation like... As long as it doesn't get exploited, I mean, if they can make their profits and still keep its integrity, then, you know, maybe we won't really notice any difference out of it. They may not do anything with yeah. it. Yeah. They could, they could they help could the industry... They could corporate yeah. into their games. They could make the esports entirely grow quicker by putting just more pizzazz keep, on keep, it. Just let it keep going? Yeah, yeah. The way that it is? Yeah. I mean, and I mean, it's definitely like the spikes in the last few years of, of how much people are getting paid to play. Yeah. I was talking to my wife about it because she didn't really... 
you know, understanding of that. And I was just like, just as much as like, eventually one day, you know, they're going to be getting paid just as much as football players or anything like that. Because uh, it's just they're, because they're categorized as like on their tax deductions, they're categorized as sports athletes now. Yeah, and I know it's hard to picture that, but all you have to do is talk to some younger kids nowadays, like 10 to 15 year old kids. They do not care about sports half the time. They are all just going on about Minecraft or Dota or League. They watch those tournaments, and yeah. they're the inheritors of so, the future. So, so two so. things. Um, don't neglect your your sports and always go outside. And play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. And the second, second thing I'd say is, I don't I don't know if if you know they they'll ever make as much as professional athletes, but certainly I feel like eventually I feel like yeah. they will. Yeah, I, I don't think because the average football player makes you know. It's not going to be. It's, it's not going to be gamer's not gonna make money anytime though. soon. It's going to be like when when we're near our deathbeds and our kids are like you know I in still, our kids, positions. Kids yeah. are going to be making. I see. Yeah. I see some people. I don't see the average being anywhere close. Well, it's essentially like things are when once you have like VR come into play and all yeah. this. Once this gets bigger, like uh, well, what's going to happen gonna be, is it's going to be Tron. Essentially, to, to, to oh, your yeah. point. I mean, it is going to become a career that mm -hmm. people can oh, yeah. do, and like you said, file their tax returns. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. who doesn't want to be a? I mean, that's, who doesn't want to play like video games professionally? I mean, because because when we were growing <laughs> up, it's a dream kids, for so many people. <laughs> that that wasn't that wasn't an accessible thing at all. And like in, in really big tournament gaming, I didn't really notice in school until like around Halo times. You know, when I saw kids like in school, it was like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna get sponsored or something like that. We had a kid drop out, or, and we had the math teacher call him up from school and ask him uh, why he dropped out and everything, and he was like, because I want to be a pro Halo, Halo player. And uh, first we asked, do you have a sponsor yet? No. Uh, are you any good? Oh, I'm pretty good. You drop out of school, man. You better be great. Yeah, like, no, yeah. that's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, it was See, that's idea. the other thing, It was too, fun to laugh at, though. They need to watch how they approach that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, all right. Well, when we get back, we're going to talk about some awesome gamer feats right after this. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we just got done talking about uh, MLG being sold to Activision. Uh, the only thing I'll say there to wrap that up is you should check out our next episode of the Checkpoint Podcast, because this is a conversation we can go on and on about, but we have to move on and tell you about other things happening in gaming. So again, my name's Will, this is James, hey. this is Nine, Yo. and let's talk about um, some gamer news. Uh, apparently, um, a cool gamer feat, a gamer beats Super Mario Galaxy with a Dance Dance Revolution gamepad. <laughs> you know, this... <laughs> <laughs> These things have become wildly popular, beating different games with different style controllers. Mm. And that's impressive. <laughs> An input. That's pretty push. impressive. But still, mm. the most impressive thing I've ever heard and witnessed on YouTube was a guy beating Dark Souls 1 with a rock band controller. <laughs> the guitar. <laughs> the actual guitar. Like, uh. think about that for a minute. There's no analog sticks on that thing. <laughs> And he's fighting some of the hardest bosses in the game with a I'm guitar I'm about to rip a solo on the Great Wolf Sift. Yeah, I mean, what an awesome stream that would be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, the guy I'm have to nuts. check that out now. Um, did he yeah. stream it? Or? He didn't stream it. He just recorded him doing it. Oh. Uh, but it's... Crazy. It's legitimately nuts. That's history, baby. it's not baby. the first game he's done that with, either. Mm. I mean, just... just uh, I agree. Different things like that. I mean, if you're able... How about... Uh, Somebody should beat Mario Brothers with the uh, Rob. With Rob? Oh my God, no! That would be that is. I, I would bet that that's probably undeniably impossible. Or it would that's take a challenge, you, everyone. You can, you can only jump like, out there. Because <laughs> so, you, you can't use two buttons with that thing at one time. So you'd have to like you time to your run. one jump, and then a minute later time your next jump. Ah, oh, that would be. Absolutely impossible. That's what purgatory is, You would actually. need, like, five robs <laughs> to do that successfully. <laughs> okay. So, that sounds like fun, too. No, that sounds like a headache just waiting to Dude, happen. that'd be awesome. Five <laughs> robs set up. That'd be really cool. I don't think you get them close enough to even hit the buttons all at once. <laughs> uh, it could be like an orchestra, <laughs> like a bunch of people. All right, this is your uh, <laughs> I'm a Rob conductor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry, uh, I, I, we, we digress. Um, another gamer uh, to preserve a saved game on a oh. Super Nintendo. <laughs> Saw that. <laughs> leaves his console on for 20 years. Uh. 
He doesn't have to worry about the battery dying on the uh -uh. cartridge then. But, I mean, what's he doing in a power outage? Does he have like a backup generator specifically for That's that? For, for the pictures SNES? I saw, it kind of looked like it was in like its own little chamber. Like, yeah. Like, boy almost and everything. Like, he's got, he's got a generator backup generator just for yeah. that thing. He's got a hamster running on a wheel does just he, in case. Does he not want to beat Sold the game? Out. I mean, I, I can't, it was like a, some kind of a weird RPG Japanese style. Game. I wasn't familiar with the title to ascertain why you would have to go why? through such troubles. And a lot of people were asking him, like, why don't you use an emulator and stuff like that? Maybe it's just pride. I get it. Yeah. Because it's like, well, I can have get Pokemon on my phone, sure, but it just feels better on I mean, Game Boy. So, so back in the day, I mean, sure. yeah. ha, ha, did you go to any extended lengths to preserve any saved games back in uh, the day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I purposely bought the batteries, like, in 10 packs when I was playing Link to the Past. Mm. Nice. Like, I bought them, so I knew, because I knew it was eventually going to die. Of course, it never died in my lifetime. Right. <laughs> so, I, I kind of spent over cautious on that Right. One. The whole ritualistic, uh, just like Nintendo saving in old Final Fantasy games where you're like holding, press start, yeah. reset, all that. I was like, okay, everyone is like, you're sweating bullets when it goes down. I mean, because I did have some terrible times where I was like moving along and I, I had a great game going and then something would happen that would bump the console and yeah. it would just go out. Shut off. Oh, yeah. no. shut, shout out to the poor kids out there. I remember being so poor that getting, I got like, I'd get the PS2, right? But we would be like, all right, we're going to, you know, mom was like, we have to wait a few months before I can get you a memory card or something like that. So you have to beat the game in one playthrough and you have to leave it on yeah. and you have to inform every member of your family, especially your mom, like, mom, I know that the game system is on. Please do not turn yeah. that off. Yeah. Like, Don't touch it. Yeah. yeah. Super, uh, Super Smash Brothers uh, for GameCube, like, I think you get Mewtwo for leaving it on for like 100 hours in a fight. If, if, you, if you're in the match for like, uh, it was, uh, no, 24 hours. It was 24 hours, but you had to leave it on for that long. 100 hours, it would just be like, fry your system. But it was 24 uh, hours. We encourage you. I remember, I remember we tried that two or three times, and my friend's mom just kept turning it off. So eventually, we basically hit it and like a closet with the TV and everything on, like a little Nintendo <laughs> shrine in there. Thing, YouTube. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Some, some of the old consoles, I remember like the Nintendo cartridges, they'd give you like a code. Mm. Yeah. You'd have to write that. Mega Man. Yeah. It, Mega it, Man used to Sega did it codes. too. But then some Aladdin. of the codes started getting like longer and longer. I'm like, yep. man. So then next thing you know, I've got like a whole notebook full of like yeah. all these. All these levels. Jasmine, Genie, Jafar, Genie. <laughs> yeah. there, there, was, uh, there was one with, uh, I think it was Ring King. I remember playing and like every match, like I were like because I didn't, I wanted to keep my undefeated record. Right. <laughs> Wasn't Earthworm Jim like that too? Like, oh man, there were a lot. There was a there all kinds of them yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And then of course, like uh, yeah, Tyson's Punch Out doesn't count because once you got that code, most people haven't memorized. <laughs> you, you just you know that's all you yeah. needed. But uh, awesome games done quick is a just started. So if if you actually um, should. Go check it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure some new records were broken, uh, but it's an amazing organization, and I really like this part of gaming where they're ra raising money and doing charitable, um, you know, donations to to charities by people calling in and put donating. You know, there's a the lot of that players. going on right now. That's cool. I love it. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. I mean, it's, a it's great good way for, to put games to good use. It's good for gamers. It's good for gaming. It's good for the charity. Uh, I, I think it encourages people to do better. A lot of coverage. Uh, a lot of coverage. Which, people, you know, like people like us, uh, are doing it, and it's awesome because you know, tuning into podcasts every week, you get kind of like a, a personal yeah, thing sure. with the, the people who are broadcasting. And so when they go on to do something this kind of charity, their fans really respond to that. You right. know, and they get they they've warranted a lot of results for these charities. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know in your comments below what are your favorite awesome games done quick and or what you've gone to, the greatest links you've gone to to preserve your saved games back in the day. All right, when we get back, we'll be talking about the Oculus and some more Star Wars right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> hey, uh, so we were talking about some Awesome games done quick and uh, gamers, consoles and feats and all that kind of stuff. Now let's talk about some Oculus news. The Oculus Rift, the PlayStation VR, should be coming out in th 2016. I think it'll be the, the year of VR. A lot of people will be having tons of new game experiences, including some of you, including us, so we can't wait to see what that brings. I hope um, they do well, both of them. Yeah, sure. Nah, there was some Oculus news. What do you have? Yeah, so, okay. 
Oculus is built off of spatial awareness, like your ability to recognize your surroundings and feel like you're virtually immersed in a, another world. Mm -hmm. So if that's accurate enough, then you should be able to perform just as well as in the real world. Right. That's the, that's the idea behind virtual reality. So they, this guy who considers himself an average racer on the PC version of Dirt Rally, never set a world record, never did anything really great, just an average racer, beats the track times, beats his buddies, and goes on to the next thing. Put the Oculus Rift on and beat the world record of a track by 12 seconds. The previous record was only beaten by one tenth of a second. As I was going to say, with racing games, it's, it's hardly ever more than a second that uh, a right. record gets beat by seconds or. And especially 12. when you're doing it, like on a PC. That's like so, twelve. So the game sex. was compatible. They made it the game compatible. The, yeah, the with game became compatible with the Oculus Rift, and because it's so good at what it does, the guy was able to feel like he was fully immersed in a vehicle and drive. Like he was driving. I want to go car. fast. <laughs> yeah, I want to go fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe he had a real life cougar in the back. Yeah, yeah. That'll make that'll make me beat some records. Uh, immersed with the cougar. Nothing more terrifying. Yeah. It smells my fear. I'm gone. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. It, it means it does the job it's supposed to do. It's supposed to make you feel like you're in a different world. It accomplishes that. Yeah. You know, I can't wait. I hope it. I hope it's amazing. I mean, I think it could do. Good things for all genres of games. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think yeah, racing is just you know that's because it's a whole different feeling when you're just looking at a screen and stuff's going by on the screen, whereas you have this full encompassing thing around your face and you can actually see stuff passing by you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the tip of the iceberg, man. It's so crazy. like you feel that stuff wishing by your face and you're like, oh crap, the turn's coming up. It'd be a whole lot easier. So so that I mean they had that goalie challenge game where you you were the goalie. Yeah. I think maybe like a quarterback challenge would be fun. Oh, like Madden, football. Madden on those things would be ridiculous. But you have to be one player. Like you'd have to do you have to be the quarterback. Right. Um, but fantasy, having fantasy universes, that's going to be awesome. Like an MMO oh that's goodness. based in virtual reality. Like goodbye life. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and you know, so many new laws in China survival and survival horror will, will greatly benefit. Allison from, Rhodes oh. coming to the freaking VR for PS4. Yeah. I'm so happy. <laughs> so happy. That's a scary game for I'm those terrified of you who don't know. <laughs> at the same time. But I'm yeah. so happy that it's making a console debut on the PS4 VR. I mean, it, you know, yes, yeah, survival horror. I, I think, yeah, sports games. Maybe like a boxing game. I mean, so yeah, so much stuff. Oh, I think boxing, there already definitely. is a boxing game for one of them, either the PlayStation VR or the Oculus Rift. I see them jumping on sports really quick. Cause they do with every like new system. New yeah. system comes out. You know, we well, and PlayStation everybody. The creative director behind the PlayStation VR said it's more than just video games that need to support this thing. Mm. Movies need to support it. Social media needs to support it. For this stuff to really take off, it's got to be fully encompassed in digital energy. That's a great idea. A, a movie that where you are just an observer. Well, they've started but to, everything is going to happen regardless whether you're there or not, but you're observing, right? They've started sampling those now, too. Oh, yeah. they've, they've got like a demo cool. one built up for a movie or something. I was reading that. So that'll, that'll probably be somewhere be near really the starting cool gate. It'll be see how that kind of stuff happens. Yeah. Man. Wow, uh, my, my imagination's are. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, we look forward to the, to the Oculus and the PlayStation VR. Um, Star Wars, The Force Unleashed, we've all seen it. Hopefully you've seen it. The Force Unleashed? That's a big Force game. Unleashed. Yeah. Force, Force Awakens. Have you seen it? It came out forever <laughs> yeah, ago. Yeah, it came out but, you know. a while ago. The second one came out like three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Force Awakens uh, at the movie theater has beaten Titanic. Um, Thank which is, you. Which is great. Blew it out of the water. It, it also has ah. be already beaten the Avengers at the box office, and uh, I'm sure it's going to continue on its way to overcome Avatar, which I think is the top movie, and that'll yep. be happy. Happy day for, for us, I think. <laughs> nerds rejoice. Yeah. Even though yeah. yeah. you know, Avatar technically is a nerds movie. It is, but... It, Star Wars should be number one. Think yeah, Star Wars that good. That's what I'm saying. It like, yeah, okay. most nerds wouldn't, didn't really get behind yeah, that as pretty, much as the general yeah, public cool. did. General public saw Avatar and was like, "What? Well, mine's blown." But video gamers, I think, to some extent, were just like, "Yeah, they're blue Star people." Star Wars should okay. be number one. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, well, I think Avengers should be number one. Some other Star, War <laughs> Star Wars news. Uh, <laughs> the original uh, uh, actor who voiced Boba Fett in the original movies dies, uh, unfortunately. So. Yep. Thoughts got to them. He was 95 years old. To the tea head. Um, Drink to the that. original bounty hunter. Yeah. Yeah. OG in a universe far, far away. Um, 
Uh, Battlefront is rumored to have sold 12 million ish copies. <laughs> ish. <laughs> what do you think about that? I don't know how. Yeah? Did you play it? I haven't played it yet. I have you it. have it. I got it for Christmas, but I haven't played it yet. So. <laughs> Uh, I expected it. I totally did. Um, it's Star Wars. <sighs> yeah, well, it's crazy. Wars. coming That's up on episode reason. seven. Yeah, coming on up, up on episode seven. The hype for that was unreal. I, I think that was planned. Yeah, I think I'm, both of those were like planned to feed off of each other. I myself find myself playing a little bit less now that you know what I mean. Like I've oh. got to see the movie. You know what I mean. Like a little bit of like just the rabid fanboy died yeah. out. I still go back and play it. Like I, I mean, will maybe play once it. or twice I a just week. Have many other things I'd rather play instead. But why not include Force Awakens DLC? Because it's supposed to be set before The Force Awakens. So I think they're just painting themselves into a corner though, because with Heroes, like how many more do you have to draw from? Like Yoda, yeah, but traditionally in video games, Yoda's always broken. <laughs> He's just too tiny to, you know what I mean, Master yeah, Jedi. Yeah, but I mean, they could make it work. You got Lando. Well, we'll see. Yeah, um, like, I don't know. All right, well anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. You can check out all of our content on PressStartTV.com. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and you can check us out on YouTube.com slash PSVGTV. Thank you so very much for joining us as always. Until next time, we'll see you later.